Hey, what is up, everyone? Welcome to the Crack House Chronicles. I am Donnie, your host, and with me is a man that says if he ever gets abducted and thrown into the back of a windowless van, he's going to be like, it's about damn time. It's yeah. Dale. <laughs> you dig him right, man. Where is the candy? I need some candy, brother. That's it. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? What's going on today, dude? Oh, nothing much, man. Ready to get this on. Had a good time last week. I uh, really want to thank Kevin for coming on and doing that. I hope you did it. If you didn't, go back in the archives and uh, check out episode 30. It was really good. Absolutely. You got any shout outs for us today this week? Yeah, we got a few. We got a few. I'd like to shout out to my buddy Bruiser Braswell down in Macon, Georgia. Check him out at his band Tape Fist. He's a he's one of my my very my very best friends and uh he listens every week and always has comments and reviews on the show so we appreciate him and a little shout out to my buddy steve from up in newton north carolina he listens and uh always uh gives us good compliments as well we appreciate you guys checking out the show big town of newton north big carolina town. that's right i also like to give a quick thank you to uh sally for giving us a five-star review and to Nikki for giving us a good review on Facebook. We appreciate anybody and everybody who goes out of the way to give us a review, a five-star review, or just uh, go on Facebook and uh, recommend us. We appreciate that so much. Absolutely. If your podcast provider allows it, please give us a five-star rating. It does help promote us and push us to the top of the ratings. I don't know how it does it, but it seems to do it. So go on there and just take a moment and give us that five-star. Click on that five-star. 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 All right, Dale, we're going to get into this episode this week, and this is the case of Vaughn Oren Greenwood. He's better known as the Skid Row Slasher. The Slasher. Yep. And this is a serial killer, and it's one of those lesser-known serial killers, Dale. Yeah, you don't see a lot about him. No, no, you don't. I mean, this was this was around the same time as some of these other out west serial killers but you just don't hear much about him it's like what was in the water out in california it must have been something <laughs> something crazy but anyway like i said he was known as a skid row slasher and he was born in 1944 in pennsylvania there's not much information on him dale couldn't find anywhere on a birth date official birth date no and he's anywhere from 75 to 76 years old according to our sources yeah we don't know much about him we just know he was in and out of foster homes pretty young and uh he quit school fairly early about seventh grade he was 13 and he decided he was just left so he just left his foster home and hitchhiked his way all the way out to california yeah he was just doing odd jobs doing whatever he could to, to make money right you know just relying on people's kindness or doing tricks or doing stuff with homeless men or whatever he could do to to support himself and being at 13 helps you to do what you got to do i guess yeah and it was known through several reports too dale that he was homosexual yeah seems that way but one of the things people may not know about vaughn greenwood that he was black he was yep still is yeah still is yeah but there's not many black serial killers out there so that's one of the reasons we wanted to cover this case because yeah. it's kind of it's going to play into the story a little bit later but it's pretty interesting yeah Pretty, pretty wild, yep. After he got to California, for the next few years, he just kind of drifted back and forth from California to Chicago. He would just jump on the trains and take that long ride and just go and then, you know, hop off and stay a while and just hang out where all the homeless people were hanging out. And that's pretty much what he did for the next few years, just going back and forth from California to Chicago. Especially in the Skid Row area of uh, right. Los Angeles. Right. Greenwood's first known victim, Dale, was found on the library steps in Actually, the Los Angeles Library steps with his throat cut and numerous stab wounds. And his name was David Russell, and he was a transient. So a lot of these people that Greenwood killed were, were homeless, transients, just pretty much bums. Yeah. Hobos. Hobos. I had somebody say that word to me. I'm like, who even says hobo? But ever since that, it's kind of like, you know, you drive the red car, you never see one, and then when you get one, you see them everywhere. But ever since so that was said... I've, I've heard hobo so many times. It's, it's pretty, pretty hilarious. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay, anyway. All right. And, yeah, his first victim was David Russell, and this happened on uh, November thirteenth, 1964. Greenwood's second victim was a 67-year-old, and his name was Benjamin Hornberg, and he was killed on the second-floor restroom of his hotel. Mm. Pretty shady hotel yeah, by all accounts. And his throat was slashed from ear to ear with numerous stab wounds, and it just pretty much riddled his body all over. 
wow. up, up and down his torso. So it was like a flop house, you think? Pretty much, yeah. 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 Now, in 1966, when Greenwood was 22, his slams were interrupted when he was in prison for over five years in Illinois for the attempted murder of a man in Chicago. So he got away with the first two then? He got away with the first two, so... And then he shot back to Chicago. Yeah, he went right. back to Chicago, and that's when he attempted murder. Yeah, he served five years for that attempted murder in Chicago. When he was 30, this was happened on December the 1st, 1974, Greenwood returned to California, and Dale, he returned with a vengeance. Yeah, he kind of upped Danny when he got back. He was... He was he yeah. been playing around no more. Yeah, he'd been done some time and he done some time in the slammer, and he was ready to get back to murder. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, he about big enough to be. Yeah. Now, Greenwood murdered forty six year old Charles Jackson, and he was an alcoholic, homeless guy, and he actually murdered him on the spot where David Russell, his first victim had been slain a decade earlier. That's pretty weird. Why do you think that was? I don't know. And everything I've read. All of his victims, it was like ritualistic. Yeah. It was like... It's pretty creepy. Yeah. And some of the things he would do, he would uh, sprinkle salt around the body. Yep. And he would take their shoes off and point the shoes toward the body, like the toes of the shoe toward the body. Now, was this at the feet or the head? I didn't ever did see. I've read where it was at the the feet where point, the shoes were pointed at the body. So... I don't know, but it was like kind of real ritualistic. Right. I wish there were some crime scene photos, but we couldn't find anything. Yeah, I can't, you can't find nothing on this. <clears throat> they also had like cups of blood with some of them, right? I don't and know they, the, they the first even, ones or was all of them? All of them. Okay. And they even said that he thought that he even drank some of the blood. Yeah, because he left a cup, a cup of blood beside the victim with the salt and then their shoes, right? And that was kind of his calling card. Yeah. And that's, that's when they knew they had a serial killer on their hands. Mm. And like I say, Dale, these, when he returned to Los Angeles, these murders happened just bam, bam, bam. So like a couple days later, actually seven days later on December the 8th, 1974, Moses Yakinak, he was a 47-year-old Eskimo, mm. and he was knifed to death in Skid Row Alley. That's it. You got a cool name, though. Oh, yeah, Eskimo name. That'd be Yakinak. And just a few days later, on December the 11th of 74, he murdered Arthur Dalstead. He was 54 years old, and he was slain outside of a, a building there in uh, Skid Row. So all this is pretty much in the same little area, right? Yeah, that's it. Now, just a few days before Christmas that year, on December the 22nd, 42-year-old David Perez was found in some shrubbery adjacent to the Los Angeles Public Library. So by this, you're thinking Skid Row, this little area, has to be fairly close to the library, right? Yeah. Cause I, I had read one thing where it said the library had some rather large shrubs, maybe 10 foot tall out. Mm-hmm. Outside. So probably, that's probably yeah. a good hiding place, I guess. Exactly. I guess he celebrated Christmas and New Year's, so he didn't do anything between Christmas and New Year's. But uh, the following year, January the, the 9th, 1975, the body of, this, I'm going to butcher this name, but it's Casimir Stravinsky. Stra, yeah, Stravinsky. Stravinsky, yeah. Yeah, Strawinsky. He was 58, and he was found in his hotel room murdered. So not just outside in the bushes. He was even going to the hotel room. So maybe he was having some kind of payment plan with this guy. Could have been. To say it nice. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And just a few days later, on January the 17th, 1975, a hotel maid found the body of 46-year-old Robert Shanahan with a bayonet protruding out of his chest. Mm. Who has a bayonet? They don't know the confirmed date of this, but it was in sometime between January the 17th of 75 and January the 29th was a 49-year-old Samuel Suarez, and that was his final Skid Row victim. And He was found in a little questionable hotel room. So I wonder if he was going with these guys to let me get money for sex or something, and then they wouldn't pay him. or he Very just, possible. Or he just wanted to kill him anyway. Maybe been, he took the money in and paid him. It had been reported I mean, that he was, he was doing tricks to make money. Right. So, yeah, that's that's probably what it, you know, he wouldn't pay him, then he'd just kill him. And on January the 31st of 75, a cash register mechanic. Do they have cash register mechanics? Probably not now. No. 
But um, a cash register mechanic, he was a 34-year-old, Clyde Hayes, was found in his Hollywood home that was murdered. Uh, I don't guess that was a Skid Row area. This is when he had moved on up, I think, from a Skid Row. He moved up to the Hollywood area. Yeah, he was expanding out his business. Yeah, he probably thinned it out pretty good down there and need to move on up. I guess people were Skid Row area knew people were getting killed. Yeah. And they were, yeah, hey, we need to get out of here. Yeah, stay in our cardboard box at night or something. Now, by this time, Dale, the Los Angeles detectives, they had formed a, a profile of this guy. And this is what they came up with. All right. The, he was just the, the serial killer that they had in their description was a white male in his late twenties or thirties, six feet tall, 190 pounds with shoulder length, stringy blonde hair, a psychiatric profile published on the morning of Clyde's murder described the killer as sexually impotent coward venting his own feelings of, on hapless derelicts and drifters. Yeah, that's close, isn't it? They're almost spot on. <laughs> they, uh, they were they were in left field on this one. Yeah, this guy, oh my God. They they, they couldn't get some more far away if they'd have tried. Yeah, this is, this. yeah, it, it didn't even describe Greenwood at all. No. So, but he was further described as friendly, poorly educated loner, probably homosexual, with an unspecified physical deformity. So they had the homosexual so they part. They got one part out of the whole story, right? Yeah, I guess, you know, them seeing the bodies of male victims, you know, they probably deduced that he was homosexual. That's, right. That's probably where they got that from. But, yeah, they were they were totally wrong on his profile. Yeah, not even close. No. On February the 2nd, 1975, Greenwood invaded the Hollywood home of William Graham. He assaulted him with a hatchet before a house guest he had named Kenneth Richer intervened, and both men plunged through a plate glass window. Now, this is according to all reports right. that we've got, but we have a different account that we're going to get into. And it says, too, that Greenwood fled on foot to the home of actor Burt Reynolds, and the report says that he carelessly dropped a letter addressed to himself in the driveway. Right. And Dale, at this time, we're going to listen to the interview with with Burt Reynolds on the Dinosaur Show. Right. We were together, and and I, as usual, either didn't come home or did come home or whatever. And this particular night, I don't know why, I came home at about three in the morning, and there was a man called. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to condense this story real fast. There was a man called the Skid Row Slasher. Oh. Who had killed? Oh, I forgot. Uh, they think about twenty-three people, you know, cut them through. And he had, he was getting some drugs down below my house, and they said, you know, who lives up there? And for I'm some reason, thought that was fascinating. He went up and waited in my closet for me, but I didn't come home. So he got bored waiting in the closet, and he went up to the house above me and killed one guy and cut the other guy real bad. Oh. Slid down the hill, and then I came home. It was then three o'clock in the morning. And you remember, I used to leave the doors wide open. Oh, yeah. And I never had a weapon in the no. house. No. And I went in and I was lying down and crawling on the floor was one of the guys from... From the house above. With his stomach wide open. He was holding his inside. And I looked down and he couldn't talk. And I jumped up and there wasn't 911 in those days, but whatever the equivalent was. And I looked out the door and standing about 15 feet from me was a skid row slasher with a machete, a Clint Eastwood hat, and a Serape. Right. He's staring at me. I'm staring at him, he's staring at me. I close the door, and then I look for a weapon. You know, I try to, a knife, a bottle, or whatever. And he slowly, it was a great act, acting lesson, because he slowly walked across and disappeared. Helicopters came, and cops came, and... Oh, I know that. What they found out was, <clears throat> the reason they knew it was him was because every time he had murdered somebody, he had taken their shoes, which only these two cops, played by Walter Matthau and Peter Falk, uh, he took their shoes and pointed them at the head. And only they knew that, the press didn't know about it. So they said, it's a skid row slasher. And can, did you see him? I said, yeah, I, I looked right in his eye. There he is. So then I went down to do WW and Dixie Dance Games. Mm. They called me and said, we got him. Because when he slid down the hill, his food stamps came out. 
and we tracked him to his address, and will you come and identify him? I said, yeah. I come back, I fly me in, they bring me down to the bottom, of the, and the, I must say, they, nobody knew about this, I was in the basement, I come up and I'm standing back there, and I'm standing with some cop who, who was a very nice guy, and he said, when you walk out, look right at him. Don't be intimidated. I said, I'm not going to be intimidated. He said, look right at him. I said, I don't worry about it. So I came out, and I looked right at him, and he looked like mm. O.J. Simpson would read for it and be too much of a fairy. <laughs> the guy was, I mean, his neck was big, and, his, and he lifted weights. He'd been in prison about 23 years of his life, and he did nothing but lift weights. So I sat down in the chair, and I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me, and he's smiling. So I smile back at him, and the public defender gets up, and he says, do you know who this is? And I said, and he said how do you know who this is? because I saw him and he had my clothes on. He said, what do you mean your clothes? I said, well, that was my Serapi that Clint Eastwood gave me from the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's right. And I said, I recognize it. And I said, there's a clean slip inside. If you look, I never could figure out why they did this. Instead of Reynolds, it says R-E-Y-O. And the guys blanched and they, they took it up and the judge said, hmm. So then he said, well, you're an actor, aren't you? And I said, well, the jury's still out about that. <laughs> and, uh, I got a very nice laugh. And, and the judge said, this is not the Tonight Show, Mr. Reynolds. Just answer the question. And I said, yes. And, and so we went back and forth, and he had my identification bracelet on. So it was a very short, but I, I had nailed it. Significant. As I got up, as I'm walking by him, I look, and as he's looking at me, he's writing. But he's not looking down, he's looking at me right. And as I came behind him, I looked over his shoulder and he said, probably about 125 times, kill Burt Reynolds, kill Burt Reynolds, kill Burt Reynolds, kill Burt Reynolds. But they, they put him away forever and ever, ever, oh, ever, he's ever. He's right next to Sir Hans or him. He will never. I know when this guy, you know, plucks his eyebrows. But the story, the end of the story is, if I hadn't been with you, I would have come home probably at nine. See? And he would have been there and uh, I'd have my shoes pointed at me right okay. now. Yeah, Dale. According to Burt Reynolds, Greenwood was wearing a Serapa that Clint Eastwood had gave him from the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, in a Clint Eastwood style hat. Yeah. Yeah, but he also said that, uh, you know, if you go back and listen to it, he says when he got home and went and laid down, he heard something, and on the floor crawling was the guy that had been wounded. So that was pretty strange to me. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I don't know if Bert Hollywooded up this story of his. You know, or, or did this guy? Well, he said, you know, the two went through the window together when they were wrestling or whatever. Yeah. And then maybe they got down there and maybe this guy ran to Bert's house and went inside. That would have been, shit, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. That's pretty crazy. But you'd think that uh, Vaughn would have called him before he got there. Unless mm-hmm. he just didn't know where he went. Yeah. So that was pretty strange. I guess that was the Kenneth Kenneth Richer guy. Yeah, but he didn't say. He just said he was holding holding his his injury there and couldn't talk. And that's when he jumped up and looked outside and saw Vaughn standing there looking at him. But that's pretty crazy. So it's because you know if you think about it, he said that uh, he had been at his house before he ever went up there. So mm-hmm. he came in there and was hid in his closet and got his clothes and put his clothes on and stuff. That is creepy. Yeah. So then got tired of waiting on him, then went up there and killed that guy and, and hacked up the other one and then came back through the yard. Mm-hmm. So that's the first we had heard of this when we found this this uh, clip. Yep. That was pretty pretty damn wild. Yep. Now, when I guess Bert went down to the police station to identify him. Yeah. According to his little interview there with Dinah. Right. And he said that Vaughn was just sitting there writing on a piece of paper according to what bert had to say it was a lot different than some of the reports in newspapers yes it was very very you know, very much different one actually. of the uh differences was the the report said that there was a a letter addressed to himself that they found right but according to bert it was food stamps food stamps yeah which they are i guess i guess greenwood probably may have lived in the skid Row area he probably had a hotel room or a some kind of little apartment or something. Somewhere you got mail, I guess. Some yeah. Or where yeah. they picked that stuff up. Yeah, I don't think he lived in Hollywood. Right. And. Yeah, according to Bert, he was actually in his house first. 
So he was there and had broken into his house and was waiting in his closet because he had his clothes and stuff. And uh, I guess when Bert was, was saying he was at Donna's house, so he didn't get home to really late. So apparently he got tired of waiting and went up to the home of William Graham, which would have just been right up the hill from Bert's Gordon to what he's talking. And that's when the assault happened up there on William. And then when uh, Kenneth intervened, you know, and he probably hacked him up pretty good. And then they both plunged through a plate glass window. And then that's when they went through Bert's, Bert's yard, you yep. know, and then – Bert says that right. he heard the guy that was wounded there, so I'm guessing maybe he crawled into his house. And then when he jumped up and seen what was going on and looked out, and that's when Greenwood was standing in his yard wearing yeah. his clothes. Yeah. I'm just staring at him, which would freaky slam out. Creepy AF. And you didn't have a clue what was going on. All you know is this guy's here, and he's gutted pretty much, and this other guy's in the yard wearing your clothes, staring at you. With a machete. <laughs> With a machete in yeah. his hand, and then just kind of walks off into the night. Yeah. And then Bert later goes down to the police department to identify him. Yeah. And he's sitting there with the public defender. And yeah. said the cop told him, when you go out, just make sure you look at and just look dead at him. And Bert said, okay, no worry, don't worry about it. Yep. And then Greenwood was sitting there writing with a piece of paper, just staring back at him. Yeah. Writing, kill Bert Reynolds. Kill yeah. Bert Reynolds over and over. Yeah, he said he was staring at him. He was writing on a piece of paper the whole time, but he said he was had eye contact with him, but he was writing at the same time, not looking what he's writing. So he said, and then Bert, you know, he says he was walking out. He looked over his shoulder to see what he's writing, and man, that'd give you chills, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. Wow, knowing that this guy's the slasher. Woo, man. So, anyway, either way you look at it, it's a pretty wild story. Yeah, I'm just glad he's not getting out of prison. Yeah, we don't need him. No, we don't. This guy don't need to be out on the street. Okay, Dale. The police picked up Vaughn Greenwood, charging him with counts of burglary and assault. Their search of this residence netting a pair of cufflinks stolen from the victim of George Frias. A year later, on January the 23rd of 76, Greenwood was indicted on 11 counts of murder in the slasher crimes. Right. You know, I don't think that confused me on there. I thought this guy was homeless, but it says, you know, they searched his residence and found those cufflinks and stuff, but... I don't know, you know, so it's kind of conflicting there a little bit. I haven't me. found anything on, on where he lived or... Right, and that one, you know, that said that uh, he actually dropped a letter addressed to himself, where was it mailing to? You know, I'm yeah. sure he didn't have a P.O. box. Yeah, but... Uh, he might have had a cardboard box, but not a P.O. box. But according to Burt Reynolds that we just listened to, he said he had food stamps. Yeah, so... I don't know. I guess it's just complex. You know, of course, Burt might have Hollywood his story up a little bit. Could but, have, but but then again, it's his own words, and this is what happened. So yeah, and this interview with Burt was on the Donna Shore show, right? And I think it. You know, this was back in the '70s, so I figured it had been pretty relative on Burt's yeah. mind. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, and if this guy was waiting in Burt's home to kill him, you know, we might not have not had uh, Smoking the Bandit. No, God, that'd have been an American tragedy. Pretty crazy. All right. While waiting on trial for murder, Greenwood was convicted of assaulting William Graham and Kenneth Richer, drawing him a prison term of 32 years to life. Now, on uh, December 30th of 76, he was convicted of nine counts of first-degree murder, the jurors failing to reach a verdict in the case of victims David Russell and Charles Jackson. Mm. But Greenwood was sentenced to life on January the 19th, 1977. The judge recommended that he never be released because, quote, his presence in any community would constitute a menace. Right. Man, you don't you know those profilers were so embarrassed when they picked this guy up because they never would have. If Burt Reynolds or if he hadn't ran through that yard and dropped that paper, they wouldn't have a clue who this guy was. No. Not a clue. Now, this is a little bit interesting fact about this. There's another serial killer out there at the time named Bobby Joe Maxwell. And he was in jail for two of the murders committed by Vaughn Greenwood. Yeah, but it's weird, Dale, that uh, Bobby Joe Maxwell and Vaughn Greenwood look eerily similar. Right. So, you know. For them not to have a clue what he looked like, how in the hell did they pin this on him? Yeah, especially to be six foot tall, stringy, blonde hair. You know, they... they they're looking for Jeffrey Dahmer, I think. Well, they had him labeled as a, just a typical California-looking guy, I guess. Yeah. yeah. The surfer slasher. Yeah. But no, this was the Skid Row slasher. Yeah. All right, Dale, you got anything to add to this story? 
No, it's just pretty cut and dry. There's not a whole lot that they know or that we could find out about this. It's pretty much, you know, when and where and who it was, who got killed and how they got killed. But we can kind of go back and talk about that a couple of blood stuff if you want. It's kind of strange. It's uh, kind of what drew me into the case at all when I was searching for a, a new victim, per se, for our uh, for our podcast. And uh, when I looked him up and he was talking about he would take the shoes and point them towards victims and there would be a cup of blood where – it looked like he drank the blood, whether they never said if he did or he didn't, or if mm-hmm. it just looked like it. And then the salt. What was up with that? I don't know. That it, was strange to me. It sounded like something off of Supernatural, you know, where they put the salt around to keep the demons in. Yeah, some kind of, yeah, it was, it was just a ritualistic thing he had. Yeah, so it never said nothing like about being a Satanist. Remember, they kind of thought that at first when he was leaving those clues, and maybe he just did that to throw them, throw them off the trail or something, going, they're really going to flip when they see this. Yeah, he had, you know, had cups of blood next to them, salt sprinkled around the outline of their heads. Cryptic marks even were were scribbled around the slash wounds, too. Right, and he said a lot of them was like around the, the tattoos or something he could find on the bodies. It was strange stuff yeah. he did. And shoes were removed and left pointing toward the bodies. So, I mean, like in an arrow shape, you think? Probably. I wish there were pictures. I'd love to see pictures on that. <laughs> yeah, if anybody has access to 1975 Police Files California, we post some pictures. <laughs> yeah. All right, Dale, according to the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitations website, Vaughn Greenwood is incarcerated at the California Men's Colony, which is in San Luis Obispo, California. I hate there's not much out there on them because, you know, newspaper article articles are just few and far between and, right. and website sleuths are just conflict and information bare details though again you know yeah. dates and, and names pretty much but i think it's a good story to be told and uh it's pretty creepy especially with the burt that's the first i would that i've heard that anywhere yeah that's pretty interesting pretty interesting all right dale we're gonna get out of here let's get out of here we want everyone to be safe be careful and always be aware of your surroundings because the next episode could be about you this is the, the crack, crack house, house chronicles, chronicles.